The Disciplines, Neris, that are essential in the spiritual aspirant, part three by Sri Murun, our translator and presented by Robert Butler. Kannan karumal kan mamilde adinai chinnam chiriye teruman tidavo kannam karumal kan mamilde adinai chinnam chiriye திருமந்திடவோ தன்னோ தனி மெய் பரதத்துவமா தன்னோ தனி மெய் பரதத்துவமா பெண்ணும் பெரியாய் அழினில் ஒளியே கண்ணம் கருமால்கள் அமிழ்ந்து அடினாய் சின்னம் சிதியேன் திருமதிடவோ தன்னம் தனி மெய் பரதத்துவமா பெண்ணம் பெரியாய் அழினின் ஒளியே அழினின் ஒளியே As I wander in confusion, the lowest of the low, a mere dog at your feet, sunk in the depths of impenetrable darkness, may you, the greatest of the great, the one and only true and absolute reality, grant me your guiding light. Om Namo Bhagavate Shri Arunachala Ramanai. So we'll get started today with the ninth Neri from Murugunar's book. Anand, please go ahead. Arulai ma... <coughs> Excuse me. Arulai maraipadu marul. Marula avadu jeeva bhodam ennam mana unarvu. Adu sakala kevalam ena iru therappadam. Sakala kevalam nenaipu marappu. Avirandu matra... அவ்விரண்டு மற்றதே சுத்தம் என்னும் துரிய நிலை அகேன் அருளை மறைப்பது மருள் மருளாவது ஜீவ போதம் என்னும் மன உணர்வு அது சகல கேவலம் என இரு திறப்படும் சகல கேவலம் நினைப்பு மறப்பு அவ்விரண்டு மற்றதே சுத்தம் என்னும் துரிய நிலை You may want to unmute yourself. Delusion, marul, is that which masks grace. Arul, delusion is the mental awareness known as ego consciousness, consisting of the two states, sakalam, the waking and dream state, and kevalam, the deep sleep state, unconditioned consciousness, which is falsely identified by the jiva as unconsciousness. These equate to thinking and absence of thought, respectively. That which is free of these two is the pure state, suttam, shuddha in Sanskrit, which is known as turiyam. Thank you. Um, so in this neri, um, Sri Murunar introduces um, a few concepts here. He says, delusion is the mental awareness known as ego consciousness, consisting of the two states, sakalam and kevalam. Um, so with regards to Sagalam, um, Robert sent me um, a nice definition. Um, it means manifold or divided. It refers to the waking and dream states in which the one awareness is divided and diversified into awareness of many things. On the other hand, with regards to Kevalam, It means single, solitary, undivided, and refers to the dreamless sleep in which awareness remains as the only one 
indivisible whole. So, um, um, Robert thought we'll bring up this um, conversation with Bhagwan uh, uh, on 26 December 1936. Please, Robert, do you want to go on and read that? Yes. We cannot remain unconscious. unconscious. We, however, say that we were unconscious in our sleep because we refer to qualified consciousness. The world, the body, etc., are so embedded in us that this relative consciousness is taken to be the self. Does anyone say in his sleep that he is unconscious? He says so now. This is the state of relative consciousness. Therefore, he speaks of relative consciousness and not of abstract, that is to say, absolute consciousness. The real consciousness is beyond relative consciousness, consciousness or unconsciousness. Okay. And uh, I had some notes to read. Shall I read those now? Um, Are we going yeah. To yeah, I just wanted to get um, um, a couple more terms here. But yeah, if you could go ahead and, and no, no, no. Okay. finish this. Okay. Um, so uh, in the last part of the, the um, of what we read from the Neri, um, because I just wanted to mention uh, Neri 9 is so large. That's one of the reasons why we divided it into three parts. So you know, we'll just look at the first part, second part, and third part, and so forth. Um, so Muruganar uh, goes on to say that that which is free of these two, meaning the Sagalam and Kevalam, is the pure state, Shuddha, and which is also known as Turiyam. So with regards to the phrase Suddha, pure state, sort of the, the best definition we could come up or we could see was in, in Tirumandram by Sage Tirumula. Robert, you want to read that, please? Yes. Some say that reality is twofold, self, I, and other, he. But self and other are not different. Therefore, those established in the state of oneness do not think that these are two. The reality in which we exist as the self without the I is known as the pure state, suttam. Two mantra verse two, three, four, eight. Right. So, and then now the final concept that, um, or the term that Sri Murugan introduced is Turiya, on which um, Sri Bhagawan commented on 18th January 1939. Robert, please. That is the state of the jnani. It is neither sleep nor waking, but intermediate between the two. There is the awareness of the waking state and the stillness of sleep. Go to the root of the thoughts and you reach the stillness of sleep, but you reach it in the full vigor of search, that is, with perfect awareness. Right. And at this point, uh, do you have, um, I'll let you, you know, add any additional comments. I just had a, a paragraph that I, I thought I would uh, read out. In the paragraph, we stress the importance of clearing doubts so that we can fully commit to the sadhana prescribed by Bhagavan. This clearing of doubts also includes the combating and destroying of entrenched ideas that we barely realize we have. One of these is that our existence alternates between consciousness and unconsciousness. These ideas are foisted upon us from an early age. Well, with a little careful analysis, we can reach the understanding that everything must exist in consciousness only, and indeed that only ultimately consciousness exists. And therefore we actually alternate not between unconsciousness and consciousness, but between unconditioned consciousness, unconsciousness as in deep sleep and conditioned ego consciousness as in the waking state. The sadhana then becomes one of translating this intellectual conviction into full realization of our true nature, following the practice explained to us by Sri Bhagavan. Okay, thank you. Any questions so far? Okay. Um, now we'll move on to the second part of the same neri. Um, Anand, please. 
ஜீவபோதம் சாமானிய திருஷ்டியில் உண்மை உடையதாக கருதப்படுதலை நோக்கி அஃதழிந்த சிவபோதம் என்னும் ஆத்ம ஜானம் ஒரே ஒரோ விடைய ஒரோ இடத்தே சூனியம் என்றும் பாழ் என்றும் உணர உரைக்கப்படும் ஜீவபோதம் சாமானிய திருஷ்டியில் உண்மை உடையதாக கருதப்படுதலை நோக்கி அஃதழிந்த சிவபோதம் என்னும் ஆன்ம ஜானம் ஒரோ விடத்தே சூன்யம் என்றும் பாழ் என்றும் உரைக்கப்படும் from the ordinary perspective in which the ego consciousness is believed to be real the knowledge of the self the shiva consciousness in which the former ego consciousness is annihilated is described variously as emptiness or a void so from the ordinary perspective in which the ego consciousness is believed to be real the knowledge of the self in the shiva consciousness in which the former that is the ego consciousness is annihilated is described as emptiness or or void um sri bhagwan stresses this and we will come to that later and we'll just finish up the third part also um uh, anand please nallirulil nattam bayindradu nasane iruladathu unnai chikkana pidithen என்றார் போன்ற ஆன்றோர் வாக்குகளால் அறிக நள்ளிருளுள் நட்டம்பை என்றாடு நாதனே இருளிடத்து உன்னை சிக்கன பிடித்தேன் என்றார் போன்ற ஆன்றோர் வாக்குகளால் அறிக This idea is expressed in the compositions of the great ones in such statements as Lord, you who in deepest darkness perform your cosmic dance. and in the darkness i grasp you and held you tight these are quotes from uh, manika vachiga shiva padanam 189 from pudita patta 116 pretty famous is aren't they so we hear that all the time and it occurs in ilai raja's composition of um, trivasham also these two lines nallirilil nattapain raadum nadane and ilidathunai chikkana pidithen so um so if you remember in the second part um basically sri murunar said when the scriptures refer to the words void etc they really are referring to the supreme state um and bhagwan also confirms this on 18 january 1937 bhagwan states is the word sunya void or blank adi sunya that is beyond sunya and mahasunya or immense void all mean the same that is the real being only and um robert has a comment on it i'll let him take over here robert please refer here to original nagpur verse 12 in which sri ramana warns against the tendency of people to assume that the self since it transcends the world of senses and the resultant phenomena must be essentially empty or void in nature or is in reality the opposite is the case it is the infinite potential which makes all universes possible and yet is untouched by them so so if you because most people interpret void as is phenomenally nothing and bhagwan wants to make sure that that's that's not it so this is a very practical tip like when you and um there is a conversation that actually happened um which is recorded on uh which is recorded on 21st July 1946 where a devotee asked bhagwan when i reached a stage where there is a vacuum or void sorry when i meditate i reach a stage where there is a vacuum or void how should i proceed from there to which bhagwan replied In all books on Vedanta you will find this question of a void or of nothing being left raised by the disciple and answered by the guru it is the mind that sees objects and has experiences and that finds a void when it ceases to see and experience but that is not you you are the constant illumination that lights up both the experiences and the void and here kumar left out a sentence which i think we can uh we could actually put in it is like a theater 
light that enables you to see the theatre, mm. the actors and the play while the play is going on, but also remains a light and enables you to say that there is no play or when it is all finished. And right, words, you mentioned that, yeah, yeah. Self will be there, whether there is phenomenal awareness or not. So the fear of void is something that arises when we fail to trust in Bhagavan that, you know, we fail to right. uh, embrace our own reality and we try to still try to grasp it outwardly and then, then we find the void. Right. There were a couple of other ends. Of other thoughts too, right? Yeah, let me go. Let, I'll let you go ahead and finish that before we open up for questions. Um, so that is this um, comment. Um, and sorry, this is actually this words from Sage Aranagirinada. Um, uh, Anand, do you want to read the Tamil real quick? Yeah. Murugan Thanivel Muni Nam Guru Endre Arul Konda Ariya Ariyam Tarama Uru Andre Aru Andre Uladandre Iladandre Irul Andre Uli Andre in an Indra the way Murugan Thanivel Muni Nam Guru Endre Arul Konda Ariya Ariyam Tarama Uru Andre it's a play of words. Uh, Robert, can you please read the English translation and then I'll let you go ahead with your comments. O Morgan, sage of the matchless spear, for those who do not hail you as guru and gain your grace, what chance of true knowledge can there be? Neither with form nor without, neither being nor non-being, neither light nor dark, all that is. You are Kandarana Buddha, verse 13. Um, do you want to explain to, uh, uh, there may be some here who may not know who Murugan is? Um, Murugan is the, um, is a god of dates from before the time of the Aryan invasion in the south and it, the, the major god of the Tamil and South Indian people. But when the Aryans came and settled in the south, he became associated with Subramanya, uh, Shiva's son. So uh, Murugan then became equated with the uh, with the divine family of Shiva, Parvati, Ganesh, uh, and uh, Skanda, mm -hmm. Subramanya, and Murugan. So he became integrated into the uh, into the uh, Vedantic scheme of things. So the second son of Muruga, that's how the tradition goes, right? I'm sorry, second son of Lord Shiva. Right. Okay, I'll let you, um, I know you have a lot of comments here. Please go ahead and then I'll, we'll open it up for questions. Just a couple. Uh, yeah. First of all, I found a verse on a similar subject by, uh, by Muruga in Sri Guru Ramana Prasadam, verse 595, which I thought was quite apt here. It says, know that the glorious feet, which lie beyond the realm of thought, are perceived differently according to the minds that reflect upon them. To those who affirm their reality, they are the light of the eternal. And to those who deny it, they are the dark void of nothingness. Uh, the dark void of nothingness. Uh, I, I wrote about that term. The state referred to... In, uh, the, the state referred to in quotes such as this is often referred to in Christian mysticism as the dark night of the soul, the stage when all phenomena of all kinds have been seen to be and have become unreal. There is a sense of a meaningless void, a dark nothingness. There can also be the sensation that one's very existence is an impossibility, that one cannot be real in any sense and that therefore one should not exist. This is because the ego mind still not being eradicated and is still trying to grasp in some way that which paradoxically uh, it has become convinced is unreal. So we're still holding on, as it were, to the void. Once we've got rid of the phenomenal world, we, we, we're still trying to see that nothingness that we've just, that used to be the world that we saw. Mm -hmm. So we still mm -hmm. haven't dropped the mind. Uh, this is exemplified in a quote from all of the Lodicum uh, that, I, that I shall read out. It said, even the Advaitins who assert that all, all they know obje objectively is false cannot escape being trapped in an empty void. 
Like them, you will be destined to repeated births and deaths. However, having experienced the loss of your ego consciousness and the bliss that arises thereafter, if you transcend even these, birth and death will end for you. And the comment on that is uh, the danger, even for the advisor, is that having realized the essential emptiness of all phenomena, if he does not then eradicate the consciousness that formerly perceived the world and now perceives an empty void, he will remain trapped in that empty void, unable to grasp the dynamic reality of the non-dual self. And that's the end of the comment. So, so, you, so when we are practicing, we're not supposed to stop at that void sensation. You just, you know, you have to, so our focus should be on the awareness. It's, it's the, the fullness of awareness. Um, so at this point, I will stop and um, open it up for any questions or comments because there is actually a lot of practical tips here. Um, so any, anyone has any questions, please go ahead. Um, I definitely have a comment. I think this, uh, the discussion of, you know, on Shunya is always a very fascinating kind of topic because as you said, you know, there's a lot of kind of confusion in terms of people come at it from one of two ways, you know, positive, positivistic, kind of like, is it Purna, is it fullness, or is it like, is it nothing, which is, I think, you know, there's like the Shunyavada school of Buddhism, and, you know, the very famous uh, philosopher, Nagarjuna, who was kind of, you know, the proponent of the school, was very famous for defeating a lot of other, you know, Nyaya philosophers and all these other mm -hmm. guys, kind of saying everything is emptiness in a way, but he eventually got caught up in the trap by kind of somebody asking him, you know, who is it that experiences the emptiness? So whether you exactly. come out of saying it's something or it's nothing, this is, you know, a trick of language. Is it really, is it an object? Is it a thing? So this is kind of, I think, a trap that people will get caught in. But like you said, the important thing is not, you know, the void itself and asking, what is it? It's kind of, who is it there that makes it, you know, that uh, avoid void absurd? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. With anybody. Exactly. So and then that's why Bhagwan said, you know, uh, when you start the practice of Atmachara, you have to go past that void sense also. And, and um, he did make a comment somewhere, I believe, in talks um, that, um, you know, uh, he, even when the Buddhists refer to the concept of um, Sunya, they really are. I mean, I think we, we, we saw one of those quotes earlier today. He, they really mean the self. Yeah. You know, ultimately, you know, because everybody kept saying, no, he's talking about emptiness. They're, that's what they're referring to. But they're oh. like, you ask him, that's ultimately what they're pointing to. Right. You know, but it's not just, it cannot be just nothing, right? Because so that is, yeah. exactly. So the word shunya led to so much misinterpretation downstream. Um, and that is what we are trying to clarify in Bhagwan clarified. And, um, you know, it's being stressed again today in um, Sri Murunar Sneri. Uh, and then also all the different quotes that we saw from uh, different scriptures. And that nice, is such an important point. Yes, Robert, please. There's a nice uh, interview with uh, uh, Papaji on, on um, YouTube where, where he discusses the idea that, you know, the Buddha espoused emptiness and therefore thousands of generations generations of Buddhists uh, spot phenomena for emptiness, but Buddha, Buddha never did that at, at all. The, the idea of emptiness that people carry around there was, was yet more baggage created. Uh, Buddha did not make a comment on, on what it was. He, he left it the ineffable reality. Right. So the idea of emptiness is something that then became a vogue amongst Buddhists. But then if you read the Heart Sutra, form is emptiness, emptiness is form, it's telling you directly that it's non-dual. Emptiness is form, form is emptiness. Right. Um, any other questions or comments? Yeah, it's interesting that uh, the word shunya is applied also to zero dinner. Yeah, the zero dinner. I don't know whether to call it as a number zero. So zero is yeah. The zero is also called very interestingly pu pujya. Pujya is one that is to be worshipped, right? Like we say a puja shri, you know, somebody who should be worshipped. So it has both the 
um, connotations of being empty, shunya, and pujyam, which is purnam. You know, the, so when you say zero, you close your you know, uh, fingers and then you know, it's one circle, endless and beginningless, purnam. So it's something that uh, seems to be connected to our uh, seeing the pujyam as empty, whereas it's really a, a combination, a, a neutralized point between plus infinity and minus infinity of numbers. So really it's very rich, but it could be perceived as uh, nothing because of its having both of them at the same time. Like the darkness and light, all the pairs of opposite are all in, a, in the state of uh, Purana Jnana. Uh, you see them as just one. There is not, nothing besides it, so it's nothing to know. All right. Any other comments? Yeah, I, I had a comment. Uh, Go ahead, the, please. Uh, I I, sh uh, I think it's interesting that uh, Ramana emphasized silence actually more than any. Uh, it, it, well, in in a lot of places, in a lot of ways. And it just occurs to me, and I've quoted this before, Ramana says you can't escape the bondage of concepts by substituting others in their place. It seems to me in some ways is that somebody who, you know, starts talking about emptiness in some ways has just substituted one set of concepts with another. I, I, you know, the sense that I get, and, you know, I could be mistaken, you know, that, you know, what Raman is really talking about is silence, or it's more accurate, maybe, to say neither, uh, neither empty nor not empty. You know, it's kind of beyond that kind of conceptualization. I could that's be... A, no, that's a good point. It's... Um... At some point, you know, basically, it's neither empty nor not empty. You know, uh, it's difficult to add any words to it. You know, uh, it's difficult to describe. That's a good way to put it. And, and, you know, there is this quote that I sent you, and I've been trying to trace its veracity. But it sounds like Ramana. That, you know, somebody told me that somebody came to him and asked him, you know, was he transmitting psychically or whatever because he remained silent so much? And Ramana's answer to him, he says, well, because there are no answers. You know, right. it sounds like him and it really struck me. You know, I, I found it a powerful kind of statement. Yeah, I don't know where uh, it, it, it occurs, but it's plausible that he made that comment, you know, and uh, that goes in. He is the silent guru. He yeah. is the offshoot of Dakshinamurti who was the first primal silent guru. Um, so it's, uh, it's possible that um, he made that comment. Bhagavan gives another way of looking at this. He says mm -hmm. that uh, words are the great grandchildren of silence because from the silence of the self comes the ego, from the ego comes the, from the mind, and from the mind come words. Therefore, if words can be powerful, how powerful can the great grandfather be? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Um, is there any other comments? Uh, yes, uh, Kumar. Shohan, please. Yeah. Um, I think two sessions ago, we were or mm -hmm. three, maybe two or three sessions ago, mm -hmm. um, satsangs ago, we were discussing uh, the concept of. Uh, I don't, I forgot the exact word. Was it spurna? Um, where where the sudden sudden brightness is uh, clarity. Clarity. Is Cl clarity yes. is furana. Yeah. Uh -huh. Furana. Yeah. yeah. Uh, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then I think uh, last uh, satsang, there were some devotees asking about, you know, exactly the same thing that they went after uh, meditating for a while, they reach a point where there's nothing. Um, and then I, I, I think I also talked about um, being bored at that time. So is, I think from what, um, what I heard today uh, is um, that, that emptiness 
is sort of the opposite of the Funa. Where the clarity or brightness you can notice, you can also notice the emptiness. And Sri Ramana Mahashi is saying is we should concentrate on the theater light, right? Where both of these are apparent, the consciousness itself. I mean, both of these are differentiated or both of these are noticed. Yeah. So, so the funa is probably the exact opposite of the emptiness, but both are, um, both are uh, something that we can observe with our consciousness. Yeah. Is that what? I yeah, so let me just um, reconcile that a, a little bit. Um, so when we say void, the emptiness, it's a phenomenal emptiness. It's emptiness of all phenomena, all, uh -huh. all um, vishaya or, or anything that's phenomenal. So that's not there. And that's why we, they are using the word wo emptiness or void. So it's a phenomenal void. On the other hand, because your true nature mm -hmm. is your true nature is consciousness itself, the true nature is consciousness itself. So mm -hmm. basically, the more and more it gets clear, and that mm -hmm. clarity is what is referred to as frana. Mm -hmm. So oh, the clarity okay, okay. is it's the clarity like... of your own nature. Oh, okay, okay. The clarity of your own fundamental, essential nature is what is referred to as frana. And mm. that, and, um, and at, so the more and more you are aware of your own nature, mm. the less and wow. less you perceive the phenomena, right? Mm. So the less mm. and less you perceive the phenomena. So that, and so and that, if you look, it's basically how you look at it. The, the, the less perception of phenomena is what is referred to as the sunya or phenomenal sunya, but mm. that it's kind of misleading. So instead of, let's just even forget the word sunya, mm -hmm. but what they are, you know, you, what you want to concentrate on is your own consciousness and, and then more and more it, clear, it becomes clear and that's what is referred to with the words furana. Mm. And at some point, the little bit of ego that is even perceiving that clarity will be gone and that won't even be anyone to even say, hey, it is clear. So even the Svurana is gone. Mm. That's a self-realized state. Wow. Okay. Um, okay. I just wanted to say that, that Michael, yeah. Michael went into this in detail in that two weeks ago. Exactly, and right. The gentleman goes back and listens to that. You know, when the Svurana is like, ah, you know, it's gone. It's the freshness, but... Mm. Uh, like Bhagavan says, uh, does a man need to remind himself that he's a man all the time? Does a jnani have to No, he doesn't, because the first realization, that's Svarana, it's gone, you're in the clear. Right. But then you spend the rest of your life in that state. And Bhagavan didn't go around thinking, wow, you know, I'm enlightened. He had reached that state and remained in it. Svarana is like the first dawning of it if you like and Michael exactly. talked about that in some detail and it'd be worth anybody that is confused about Thrada uh, re-listening to should be quite exactly. a section on that and within it yeah and that's it used a nice word the, the fresh dawning of your own state is mm. is what is referred to as Thrana. and then finally that that also is gone right because you are that there is no two to for one to perceive that something is getting clear so that mm. piece is also gone. You know. wow. Okay, so then, uh, um, yeah, that was really great, but um, that makes me curious um, whether I'm getting this right. Uh, chronologically, I think then and on the path, what we're talking about today comes before Furana because you have to reach the void. And then, I mean, you don't have to reach the void, but you may reach a void. And then the clarity of your own consciousness starts coming out. 
I think you, got, you nailed that right. So you may, you use the word may, you may or may not. So, uh, so f f I, I mean, I have never felt that, that so-called void, and I'm, but I, I have heard many people say that. So, so you may or may not feel the void, but if you do feel the void, that's not it. That's the message of today's session. Mm -hmm. So you just, you know, you're supposed to go past it, just, just focus on your awareness. Cool, great, thank you. You're welcome. So um, I did see, uh, because we're short of time, I did see one hand go up, I think it's probably Rabi. So could you just quickly make the comment before we close the session? Sure, Rabi? I think. Yeah. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, go ahead. Okay, so uh, you alluded uh, that there are practical implications of this scenario, of yeah. this understanding. So what are those? Can you uh, briefly summarize how, how you see those practical implications? So the, the practical implication, one of the, as I say, the practical implication, which is, um, which we just discussed is, is to go past that void. That's very important for those who feel like there is a void, you know, remember like, you know, a lot of many satsangs, uh, Rabbi, you might remember a lot of our devotees say, Hey, when I'm trying to practice, I just feel that's empty. You know, uh, this, I don't feel anything. Um, some, sometimes I, I, one time I may have had a comment, it, I, it, I'm just spaced out. Uh, you know, things like that. Uh, so that's not it. You're supposed to, it's, it's, it's a fullness of your awareness, You're supposed to go past it. Good. Namaskar.